women and children buried under rubble after Russian airstrike destroys maternity hospital in Mariupol, Ukraine claims. At least 17 people were wounded after a Russian airstrike destroyed a maternity hospital in the besieged city of Mariupol, Ukraine has claimed. President Volodymyr Zelensky claimed children were left buried under the rubble after the strike on Wednesday afternoon and branded the attack an atrocity. The attack at the maternity ward left 17 people wounded. The airstrike occurred at the maternity hospital in Mariupol Credit, AP. A dad pictured carrying his child after the airstrike credit, AP. The attack destroyed the maternity hospital credit, AP. The city council claimed Russian forces dropped several bombs credit, Twitter. The strike hit a maternity hospital in Mariupol credit, Twitter. Horror footage showed people being rushed out of the building credit, Twitter. The airstrike was carried out during an agreed ceasefire period that was meant to allow the evacuation of civilians from the besieged southern city, said regional governor Pablo Kirilenko. Horror footage showed the charred remains of the hospital with wounded staff and patients being rushed out of the building into a devastating scene of burning cars and smoldering rubble. Previous attempts to allow civilians to evacuate safely failed, with harrowing images showing people running for shelter. The city council accused brutal Russian forces of dropping several bombs on the hospital with footage showing a huge crater outside one of the buildings. Mariupol City Council said, the Russian occupying forces have dropped several bombs on the children's hospital. Zelensky shared footage of the harrowing scene inside the building and said, direct strike of Russian troops at the maternity hospital. The Ukraine president has repeatedly urged the US and other NATO nations to impose a no-fly zone to protect his citizens against bombing, rocket attacks and advancing Russian troops. Ukrainian MP Dmitry Gurin claimed many women had been killed or wounded in the Russian bombardment. Days of shelling in Mariupol have cut residents off from the outside world and forced them to scavenge for food and water. Mariupol's deputy mayor said 1,170 civilians have been killed in the city since the start of the Russian invasion. Yesterday, a girl, 8, died of dehydration after Russian attacks left her without access to water, power, or heating. And a Red Cross aid mission was allegedly hit by a Russian bomb in the city, amid reports victims of shelling are being buried in mass graves. Two bombs were dropped in the attack on the International and the Ukrainian Committees of the Red Cross, according to unverified reports. Despite Russian and Ukrainian officials agreeing to establish humanitarian quarters to allow civilians out of some cities, Russia has been accused of shelling evacuation routes. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry said Russian forces launched an attack right at the humanitarian corridor and launched an attack right at the humanitarian corridor. Earlier Ukraine's Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleva said Russia had broken the ceasefire around the southern port, which lies between Russian-backed separatist areas of eastern Ukraine and Crimea. He said, Russia continues holding hostage over 400,000 people in Mariupol, blocks humanitarian aid and evacuation. Thousands of people are thought to have been killed in Ukraine, both civilians and soldiers, in two weeks of fighting since Putin's forces stormed the country. The UN said more than 2 million people have now fled the country, the biggest exodus of refugees in Europe since the end of World War II. Ukraine has blamed Russia for violating ceasefire agreements, although the Russian military denies firing on civilian convoys. U.S. defense officials estimate that Russia has fired more than 600 missiles from inside or at Ukraine since February 24. The scene at the maternity hospital in Mariupol credit, Twitter. The damage inside the hospital after the airstrike credit, not known, clear with picture desk. A girl sits in the improvised bomb shelter in Mariupol Credit, AP. A man lights a fire under the kettle in a yard of a building hit by shelling in Mariupol Credit, AP. It comes as Russia's stranded troops are facing freezing to death in their tanks as Putin's military becomes bogged down in the mud in an unwinnable war in Ukraine. A 40-mile-long convoy of tanks and armored vehicles remains trapped outside Kyiv, more than a week after launching their assault on the Ukrainian capital. As a sudden cold snap sends temperatures in Eastern Europe plunging to 10 C overnight, or 20 C including wind chill, Russian troops are trapped in what one ex-soldier called 40-ton iron freezers. Icy conditions are also set to make life even harder for Putin's invaders, who have been stuck around 20 miles from Kiev for days amid mechanical problems, fuel supply issues, and solid Ukrainian resistance. 
Aerial satellite images taken on Wednesday morning show the traffic jam of Russian military vehicle close to Antonov Airport, just a few miles northwest of the outskirts of Kyiv. Former British Army Major Kevin Price told the Mail Online that Russia's tanks will become nothing more than 40-ton freezers as temperatures plummet, and said that the bitter conditions will further dampen the morale of the Russian military. Already, reports are coming in of demoralized Russian troops complaining about the war and intercepted phone calls to comrades and loved ones. In the calls, Putin's troops claim the war could drag on for months and say they are being massacred in Ukraine. Russian soldiers are reportedly deserting their posts after large-scale losses, including the deaths of top generals. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby said that Russian troops are having morale problems. He said, they are having supply problems. Today, President Zelensky warned the international community would be responsible for a mass humanitarian catastrophe if it doesn't agree to a no-fly zone. Russia uses missiles, aircraft and helicopters against us, against civilians, against our cities, against our infrastructure. It is the humanitarian duty of the world to respond, he said in his daily televised address. He said Ukraine has shown in the past two weeks that they will never give in.